since we are approaching the end of all things, be intentional, purposeful, and self-controlled so that you can be given to prayer. Above all, constantly echo God's intense love for one another. For love will be a canopy over a multitude of sins. Be compassionate to foreigners without complaining. Every believer has received grace gifts, so use them to serve one another as faithful stewards of the many-colored tapestry of God's grace. For example, if you have a speaking gift, speak as though God were speaking His words through you. If you have the gift of serving, do it passionately with the strength God gives you so that in everything God alone will be glorified through Jesus Christ. For to Him belong the power and the glory forever. Through all ages, Amen. I won't hesitate to continually remind you of these truths, even though you are aware of them and are well established in the present measure of truth you have already embraced. And as long as I live, I will continue to awaken you with this reminder. Since our Lord Jesus, the Anointed One, has clearly revealed that my departure is near. Indeed, I'm passionate to share these things with you, so that you will always remember them after my exodus from this life. Beloved friends, this is now the second letter I have written to you in which I have attempted to stir up and awaken you to a proper mindset. So never forget both the prophecies spoken by the holy prophets of old and the teaching of our Lord and Savior spoken by your apostles. Above all, you must understand that in the last days mockers will multiply chasing after their evil desires. They'll say, So what about this promise of His coming? Our ancestors are dead and buried, yet everything is still the same as it was since from the beginning of time until now. But they conveniently overlook that from the beginning, the heavens and the earth were created by God's Word. He spoke, and the dry ground separated from the waters. Then long afterward, he destroyed the world with the tremendous flood by those very waters. And now, by the same powerful word, the heavens and the earth are reserved for fire, being kept for judgment day, when all the ungodly will perish. So dear friends, don't let this one thing escape your notice. A single day counts like a thousand years to the Lord Yahweh, and a thousand years counts as one day. This means that, contrary to man's perspective, the Lord is not late with His promise to return, as some measure lateness, but rather His delay simply reveals His loving patience towards you, because He does not want any to perish but all to come to repentance. The day of the Lord will come and take everyone by surprise, as unexpected as a home invasion. The atmosphere will be set on fire and vanish with a horrific roar, and the heavenly bodies will melt away as in a tremendous blaze. The earth and every activity of man will be laid bare. Since all these things are on the verge of being dismantled, don't you see how vital it is to live a holy life? We must be consumed with godliness while we anticipate to help to speed up the coming of the day of God when the atmosphere will be set on fire and the heavenly bodies consumed in a blaze. But as we wait, trust in God's royal proclamation to be fulfilled. There are heavens coming new in quality, 
and an earth new in quality where righteousness will be fully at home. <laughs>